Welcome back to Gamers Without Borders. The bracket is starting to take shape over here. Some teams are putting their stamp on this competition and others cracks are starting to form and they are being punished and sent into the lower bracket. We've got a $2.5 million tournament on our, on our hands here at Gamers Without Borders. My name is Banks and welcome back to my virtual studio here. And I have two new faces joining me, as you can see on your screen, to my, well, your right-hand side, my left-hand side. It's my fellow Brits. It's Colin hey. Stumpy. Right, well, Stumpy. Last time I saw you, we were at Gamers 8 together. How have you been? You it's were. been a long time. Yeah, it's been a very long time. I've missed you massively, Banks. You're in a lovely new studio now. You're looking great. You've been hosting such wonderful host work you've been doing. Um, yeah, you've been over on the B stream. A lot's been going on over there. Um, we had a little run through the lower bracket. We saw Boulevard go home. Sad for them. But we've all seen Optic do very well. So, yeah, a little bit, a little bit of both. A little bit of both. How have you been? I am very well. As you can see, I've um, leveled up my streaming room. I'm at home right now. <laughs> would you believe it? Uh, sponsors oh. everywhere. Absolutely living the dream. Uh, <laughs> Cole. <laughs> very right, new. Hello, mate. Yeah, I'm feeling good as well. No, fair play for you, demolishing your entire home exactly. to build up this 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 giant warehouse that you're standing in. I hope you're not lonely in there, Banks, because the last thing I'd want is for you to be all sad. So just know that even if we're not with you in person, we're with you in spirit. Oh, thank you very much. You know, I don't think I got the memo. I don't think I got the T-shirt memo. Maybe I should just like come. You know what? Why not? Let's hey, he's all right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm it down, <laughs> mister. You've been looking for an excuse to do that the... all night. All right, we know <laughs> it. Tops off. Here we go. It's time to get cracking. Right, we've got the <laughs> NA region right now. Two and a half, well, $1.25 million for this particular region. And then we've got EU oh. with the same bit later on. I know, an crazy, a crazy amount of charitable donations on the line here, Cole. It's going to be a good day. It's got to be a great day, yeah, and all these uh, all these players are making money for charities of their choices for a good cause, but it's also for the personal cause, and they're making it towards Gamers A. I mean, all these players are going to be wanting, they're going to be wanting to make money for charity, of course, but they're also going to want to be there in Saudi Arabia, getting their hands on hundreds of thousands of dollars. Just for being there, you make a fair amount of money, so this is huge, these coming games. Yeah, it really is. And speaking of coming games, we've got Space Station going up against G2 here on the A stream up next. Stumpy, two Titan Orgs going head to head. What are mm. your thoughts? I, I'm intrigued because G2, last time we saw them at Gamers 8, it was not their format, you know? They are a 3v3 team. That is what they focus on. That's what they should be focusing on. They don't have a 1v1 or 2v2 specialist or specialists. Whereas Space Station Gaming... I kind of thought that they would be putting forward LJ um, into the 1v1s, but Arsenal took it up, and we were both confused as to why that happened. It was very weird. It, yeah. it shook us for the entire series, but <laughs> I think this is going to be a question mark of who can very much adapt their 3v3 focus team into a 2s and a 1s focus team, depending on what's needed. I mean, don't worry, we're going to be talking about that 1v1 very shortly, but there's so much talk for indi of individual presence whenever we discuss Rocket League esports and the likes of Zen and the likes of Daniel's name that always kind of pops up, doesn't it? And now we have the opportunity to actually showcase this in twos and ones. So when we're thinking about these two teams that are next going up, Space Station and G2, Cole, whose time is it to shine? You've already touched kind of on LJ and the Arsenal taking the ones. What about G2? I mean, G2, so they're a team, they are, they're very much a 3v3 team. There's no real standout 1v1 or 2v2 uh, in there. But Atomic's playing well. You know, earlier on, he got the win against Koi when they brought in their super sub, and suddenly people were saying, wow, Koi have brought in the number one rated 1v1 player. Surely they're going to win. Didn't phase Atomic, so fair play to him. He's clearly used to dealing with that sort of pressure and doing well as well. We have to remember as well that last time in Gamers 8, JNaps couldn't actually play, and it was their old teammate Mist who stepped in. In, or Atomic's old teammate Mist who stepped in for them. So it's the first time we'll see G2 Esports as their main trio in this Crew Battles format. And so far, they're doing well, Banks. Yeah, I guess with Atomic, with the case of Atomic, I guess it's just kind of experience lent itself to that mm. situation. Um, maybe Cosmic was thrown in the deep end a little bit there, but nevertheless, mm. it's a 1v1. It's in a high stakes competition. You've got to pull out mm. your best cards. So, you know, I feel like Space Station, we're going to touch on it now. They had that disappointing 1v1, let's say. Arsenal went up against Toasty. It was 11-3 to Toasty when I last checked. I think it finished at that. Do we feel like a it switcheroo did, yeah. is on the cards for Space Station, given the 1v1? one that they're about to have. Stump it. Yes, please, please <laughs> change it. Please, Arsenal, look, you're a great guy. You're good at Rocket League, typically. You're, you're decent at Rocket League <laughs> in many ways. 
please don't play 1v1 um, in this competition again because LJ and uh, or Hoxa, I think, just would put up a better performance. Toasty, he's hardly at like the top, top of North American 1v1, mm -hmm. and yet it was 11 3. He got completely dismantled. It is not his game mode. That is okay. It was a strange decision from them, and although they won the series, I hope that that has given Arsenal that sated his. Okay, I'm done with one v one for now. <laughs> I can I can wipe my mouth and move on and just do twos and threes if I really need to. The thing is as well that it's surely enjoyable for Arsenal to just watch his teammates hopefully demolish any opponent that comes up. You know, it's an enviable enviable position to be in. So hopefully, yeah, for Arsenal, he's ready to move on from the one v one world. <laughs> Mm. Well, Cole, sticking with you, the uh, upper bracket that we just witnessed between Complexity and version 1, were you backing version 1 or were you backing Complexity like Johnny and Jobby? I mean, honestly, I moved over from the B stream to the A stream three quarters of the way through that series and I saw a whirlwind finish. So I, I, I dread to say now which team I would have been rooting for. Actually, you know what? I take it back. I reckon it would have been version 1 in 3 or 3 2. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, because <laughs> I'm that clever. You would have just got it correct. Well yeah, done. That's, that's very big of you. What was I meant to say? No, I think I'd have got it wrong. I don't know. I don't know, mate. I can't. I... You would have got it wrong. We know you. You would have got it wrong. You would have just said the wrong number of games. It's fine. It's if okay. Have, if I'd have predicted version one, then it would have cursed them and complexity would have won. So no exactly. problem. The one, baby. Oh, okay. Well, speaking of individual players, individual presence within the Rocket League esports and the Rocket League community, we actually have a little video for you because we had uh, we got the opportunity to catch up with some of our players earlier this week, and this is what Hawkser had to say. Uh, well, I'm Hawkser of Space Station Rocket League, and my two teammates are Arsenal and LJ. I wouldn't say I'm the glue player like entirely, but I'm partially like the person that makes everything work. Uh, Arsenal is sort of our like disruptor, like super fast, like always on the ball or always in the play kind of guy. LJ is sort of the one who gets to take advantage of the space that uh, Arsenal and I create. That's sort of how our team works. The goal is always to win, but the expectation is to you know first make it there and hopefully place highly. Our biggest strength is definitely our creativity. When we're playing well, we're definitely very hard to read and hard to defend. Our ones is definitely our biggest wild card right now. We're not exactly sure. LJ is not really the biggest ones grinder, but I mean I think he can do well. He's very good mechanically and defensively, which is sort of like the the fundamentals of ones is that you can make good plays on the ball and defend yourself. So. Well, hopefully we'll be the team winning the event, but if I had to pick a different team, probably version one, they, they have all good, they fill in for every game mode. They're all very good at twos, ones, and threes, but yeah, hopefully it's us. Uh, raising money for charity is definitely a good motivator. I, I think obviously charity is a great thing. You know, well, whatever supporters are left for SSG, uh, I know there's some people out there who don't love us, but the people who do, uh, I appreciate it and hopefully stick with us throughout the, the rest of the season and past that and Gamers 8 and anything else that might come in between. So, thank you. We love you, Hoxer. Mm. Don't be so hard on yourself. What was that about? Cole, <laughs> well, you love Hoxer. I've heard I, you I, say I, do, I, I do love Hoxer. I mean, what he's referring to is that when they dropped Rettles, a lot of people sort of went, oh, have they done that? And then Daniel left them and everyone went, oh, this team's going to die. But so he's referring to that. So that's the, 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 not the hate, but the disagreements that he's referring to. But Space Station Gaming are a massive org and they have tens of thousands of fans. And the way they were playing earlier on against Team Axel, they've certainly won me and Stumpy over in their 3v3 prowess. They are Speak looking me. every bit. Okay, they've certainly won <laughs> me over. And Stumpy, I'm sure. I, I think you fell in love with it. Just admit it. Look, admit your Team Hoxer, your Team Elder. I hate Space Station Gaming. No, they're great. <laughs> Um, I, I, they're, they're, they're a team that lost a few fans because of the whole Rettles and Daniel fiascos, but yeah. I think, yeah, I completely agree. They were they were more fun to watch now that Daniel has gone weirdly. Yeah. Now that they've got LJ and Hoxha together, that is working better despite dropping a superstar. So it's very interesting to see what is actually going on with Space Station right now. Against G2, though, yeah. that is a very, very big mountain that, that they're going to have to climb. Is it that uh, is it that lack of expectation now, kind of? Because now you've got a team that's rebuilt. The expectation isn't necessarily as much on their shoulders. So when you see them perform well, it's that much more exciting, Cole. It's 
almost that. I, I personally believe that it's that LJ always was in this shadow of Daniel. He was brought in mm. expecting to be as good as Daniel. You're not as good as Daniel. You played well. It's LJ's fault, blah, blah, blah. Now Daniel has moved on. They're able to actually stand in their own regard. And honestly, we're basing this on a, on a, on a, on a tiny pool right now. We're seeing them played, what, two 3v3s against Team Axel? <laughs> but just based on that microcosm, it seems that there's a freedom to Space Station gaming that they haven't had in a very long time. So hopefully they continue to build on that. And G2 Esports, what better test for them? Also, Stumpy, uh, Hoxa seemed Hello. to back Arsenal's uh, 1v1 prowess in that video. Would you like to <laughs> rebuttal? 11-3. <laughs> yeah, just look at the numbers. <laughs> just look at the numbers, mate. 11 is quite considerably bigger than 3, unfortunately, Hoxa. But this is what I mean. I feel like there is definitely rhyme or reason for Arsenal going into that 1v1. But it also looks a little bit like it was... Just sort of for fun. It looked like just sort of a bit of a show match. Like, oh, this will be funny. Tell Arsenal he's good and make him play a 1v1 on stream. Like, I'm sure that they were thinking, he's going to kill this. It is oh. brilliant. And then he just keeps, he just gets more bloody and bruised. It's like, stop, please. Our theory was that it was to make it fair because Hoxer and LJ were going to do yeah. the twos. So it's like, oh, it's only fair that Arsenal gets the one then. But Yeah, they get the one alternate you know, game modes and they're all playing equally and then they can all earn the same amount of money. But I don't know. I want Arsenal to do a lot better. Better. I tell you what, I want Arsenal to play in the hopeful 1v1 that we see, just so he can prove me wrong and so that people can tell me something he was good all along because I would love that. And that would just been the weirdest throw of all time. I mean, watch out when Stumpy wears red, everyone. It's like Tiger Woods on a Sunday. You're swinging for the masses. I can't believe it. Right. I like this energy, though. Let's keep it. But we've heard from Hoxer from Space Station Gaming, so now it's only fair that we hear from G2. Let's see what they had to say before today's match. To be honest, I as a player and I think our team wasn't very confident. The Gamers Day tournament was something uh, we've never really experienced before as a team. Uh, we didn't really know what to expect going in because we had never been to one before. The atmosphere, the location, the stage, we all really ended up liking the experience. So seeing a bunch of different regions compete in a new format like we've never seen before made it super interesting. You had no idea what was going to happen. Unfortunately, going into the tournament, uh, one of our players got COVID, so we recruited a sub from another pro team, and we didn't really have much experience playing together as well as we weren't the greatest 2v2 and 1v1 players. Yeah, we played Twisted Minds in the first round, and we honestly had just treated them with the utmost respect and knew that if we took them lightly, it could go horribly. So we just treated it like any other top team, and I think because of our focus and our work, we just were able to come in confidently. No boost though. As it gets cleared back and in the midfield, it's met. On target, going to be a tough read, a shot uh -oh. opportunity for G2. They're going to put it top right at Chicago with perfect placement. And it's a little salt in the wound there because obviously it was a big miss off the back. I would say us versus Luminosity was very even. I'd probably say maybe they had a little bit of the upper hand just because it was their actual team where we might have had a sub. And they also had Atomic, who was a great once player. But I would say it was an even match and we definitely could have won it looking back on it. But they were, again, at the time they were the better team and they deserved it. Yeah, missed. Trying to high wire nothing way out of here. Now only with two boots to the tank and Atomic just baited him in. Luminosity, I definitely think we started getting a little bit more of a better feel for the tournament when it came to the format. 1v1, we probably weren't going to win a lot, so put more focus in our 2v2 and 3v3 and make that as best as we can so we can try and grab all those wins whenever it's possible. Complexity had just moved over to North America, and this was their first season from originally being Sam, so they were getting a lot better. And uh, this tournament format, they did not make Worlds, so this was kind of a huge deal for them, and they had been prepping super hard to play 1v1s and 2v2s to do extra well in this tournament, so we knew that they were going to be a little bit more prepared than us, and I think that preparation just kind of showed, and we kept it close. Keep up with the play. This one's going to be poked out to Race Bowl. He's got full boost now. Ten seconds left. Race Bowl, the hero for Complexity. Over one, gets the backboard. Follow-up's there, and Complexity into the lead with five seconds left. Honestly, when I run ended, uh, I was super sad because there was a lot of money to be had and a lot more competing to be had, which is always the fun part. As well as, you know, it was just a fun new tournament experience where 
we haven't done something like that before. So just getting to play in more matches, and especially in front of this on stage, would have been nothing but a bonus. So uh, definitely, like I said, wasn't expecting to go super far, but was still super disappointed. I think our mindset's a lot different going to this year's tournament. We know the format a little bit better. Um, we know to be more prepared for 1v1s and 2v2s, as well as focus on our 3v3. But the main thing is the mental resilience it takes. Uh, being able to lose a game and win the next one and get right back up is the, the difference in losing series or winning series in this kind of format. So it's super important to be mentally strong and be able to get yourself right back up. I think uh, our team is going to be super confident going into this online portion. I think uh, it'll be tough for sure, but I think we're all confident and put in that work to get just even better at 2v2s and 1v1s. And then once we get to that point, uh, I definitely think we'll be a threat when it comes to winning the land. Chicago from G2, that tense music. I have to say, I thought that James Bond was going to come flying through in an Aston Martin at some point in the beginning of that video. Um, not with the best performance, I have to say, coming into Gamers 8. Cole, um, yeah, as always this year. I mean, I, I think that it goes to show how good the production is, that I am, you know, I've, I've got goosebumps. I'm, I'm hyped up <laughs> for a team that ultimately finished 13th to 16th. I'm like, yeah, let's see that documentary, <laughs> the G2 run from Gamers 8 2022. <laughs> Wild stuff. But yeah, they'll, they'll be a lot better this time around. And it's good to see that they are taking into account the fact that it's not just threes. I can see why G2 mm. at that time, I mean, I'm going back in time in my mind, but I think they were either major holders or had won two majors ago i think i think it was just after spring and they won winter so they'd recently won a lan in 3v3 they would have been super ultra confident and now they're coming into this one maybe a little bit a little bit more humble and and, and trying to well, figure out the other game modes around it well they'd, they'd won winter's lan and then there was then this spring major which then they went out before the crowd days so yeah. they had their weird like up, down, good, up, down thing. bad, but then they also then had another bad um, at the game as eight. But then they had a good some of the finals of the World Championship. So Take fun it. for them. But oh yeah, like I say, God, I'm happy that they've been that they're actually focusing and thinking. Right, this is good. It's going to be um, uh, taking place. You know, um, uh, after Worlds is happening as well. We have got time to practice for this properly. So yeah, very interesting. Oh, I'm just thinking, you know, drive to survive Rocket League Edition or fly to survive. Anyway, <laughs> predictions. Like I'm going to dive to both of you very, very quickly. Uh, Stumpy, actually, I'm going to kick things off with you. Predictions for G2 versus Space Station. Space Station Gaming and, and Arsenal wins the 1v1. Oh, I love it. Yes, slating him and now backing him. Let's go. Go on, Cole. Space Station Gaming and Arsenal loses the 1v1. Oh, I love this. I love a butting of heads in the virtual studio. It's amazing. It brings out the worst in people. Let's go. Right, we are going to dive into our next match of the day. It is G2 versus Space Station Gaming. And we've got Johnny and Jorby sitting in the caster seats. Let's go, guys. Thank you so much, Banks. Appreciate it. G2 versus Space Station about to get underway. And G2 is Atomic playing against Cosmic in the 1v1. The only time we saw him play 1v1 in the tournament today. Possibly up against Arsenal in 1v1. But we got a lot of 3v3 and maybe some 2v2 to get uh, to get uh, going before we get there, Johnny. Yeah, I, I, for, for some reason, I feel like the 1v1 might be game four in this series. I think either team is picking uh, 2v2 if it, if it comes to, you know, being the team to choose um, the game mode for game two. That's going to be the loser of game one that picks that uh, game mode for the second game. So, yeah, G2 Space Station, you know, I think you've got to go G2 here. I think, you know, they are the better to the better 3v3 team and we're gonna have three games of 3v3 oh that's a great save but not good enough jane out spits in the first goal yeah g2 they they have to just be winning this with uh with how many uh 3v3 wins they've already put on the board this season yeah, I mean, it's got to be difficult for Space Station, right? You have, you have to replace Daniel with Hoxer. They're still trying to find their way uh, all in, with this new team, and then you just have veteran G2 standing in the way. It really can't... It doesn't get much more difficult for Space Station, and G2 already getting that first goal, setting the tone, just like G2 did last time against Koi. You know, Space Station, they do have some longtime players on the team, Arsenal specifically, but... You know, they're going to need that full team effort here against G2. And uh, remember as well, the loser of this match will be playing again later today to try and qualify for Gamers 8 um, through the lower bracket against Optic Gaming. So I know that there's a lot of fans who are hoping to see a Space Station versus Optic in the lower bracket, not just G2 fans who would know that that would 
also mean G2 have already qualified, but um, I think Optic fans as well, they would love a piece of that with a history between Rettles and Arsenal. Who knows, maybe uh, Rettles would ask AJ, give me, give me the controller, let me take on Arsenal in 1v1. This is personal. <laughs> that might be the one we see him play on. The pass from LJ, so close to connecting. It was just a little too tight. Now this pass, oh. a weak shot from Arsenal with no boost. He side flipped into the ball, got no power on it, and G2 get out. He has promising signs from Space Station that they can fight for the midfield against G2, who swarms so many of their uh, teams they go up against these days. Yeah, still, you know, just so far from base what we've seen, just more confident that G2 are going to be the team to come out on top here. You know, Space Station have got LJ, the 2v2 world record MMR holder. But, you know, I don't know if that's going to be enough against a team who are so good in 3v3 and also have Atomic in form. Atomic was fantastic earlier on today against uh, 1v1 main, getting a win to help G2 sweep their opening match. I mean, LJ being high in that two's MMR, getting the world record, as you said, I mean, it only takes you so far because you also got to deal with Chicago and Atomic in, in the yeah. 2v2. And it's just going to be difficult no matter which way Space Station decide to swing it. They've had issues generating offense. They've been able to handle business on the orange half, keep the ball out. They have a little bit of pressure, a decent try from LJ, but turned away. Now Arsenal's slowing it down. And a good try there for Space Station, but oh, G2 wow. do get another clear. Yeah, composed defense there from Chicago in a 1v2. Just took his time, got goal side, and very quick play from JNAPS in the follow-up as well. This is all, all looking good for G2 here. They've got their usual gameplay um, fully functional, but, you know, the question from G2 this season and this year has been about consistency and, you know, probably more importantly, mechanical consistency. I think they, right now, are looking brilliant. In that aspect, again, Chicago too quick for Space Station. The near post, post keeps Space Station at a one goal deficit. Waiting for Hawkser to take that next step as a player. He's always shown the spots of it over time. Think back to his time on Ghost. You know, he routinely looked like the best player on that team. And yeah. maybe if you could get a different cast around him, he'll start to pop off and really show his colors. But he's not had the best time here in this 3v3 game. They've been trying. I think LJ is really looked the best so far been facilitating the offense he even had that shot attempt that was blocked by oh. chicago gets another pass oh. out and open net off the demo and hawkser will collect the tying goal oh i don't think g2 realized just how desperate the situation was tomic slow playing in the back corner we've got another g2 player upfield chicago making a boost run and jnaps got sniped one one space station puts it together all you need is that one try the demos come out for space station and LJ getting deleted already off the bat. Arsenal slowing it down, taking his time with the space. Oh he actually chips it over one. And G2, the chips start to show. Yeah, no, G2, they were sitting pretty comfortably in defense for a lot of these exchanges. But that one demo has suddenly put Space Station in an advantageous position. Now G2 are panicking, double commit the near post. Last Ooh. man, JNAPS makes the key save. Chicago is there to follow up. He doesn't get the reset right. Jumped a bit early there. Actually jumped off the ball instead of flipping into it. Space Station are all over them. Another challenge in front. Oh, high ball for Hawkser. Wanted to keep it close. Drilled that ball away for Chicago. LJ underneath. Forced two to commit from G2, who just keep having to dive in front of their box for a save. Now Arsenal actually made that work over to Hawkser, but JNAPS did enough to break up the passing play. Is it enough for G2, though, to breathe a little bit? Space Station grabbed the ball again. G2 start to get a couple more touches. And Space Station slowly losing it. A massive double commit. Oh Leaves my. the net. What? No way. What? what? <laughs> you can't go and miss that. Chicago has just missed a wide open net. What on earth was that? I just, whoa, whoa, whoa. G2, Chicago, he doesn't miss those. I guess Matthew's going to have to give him a talking to after that. What in the world? I mean, G2 shooting has plagued them at times. Surely not again. Oh my goodness, he can't go in the post again. But this time he barrels through the ball and it turns out to be a good finish. Straight off the kickoff, Chicago has a chance to redeem himself. And I suppose he does. I mean, he, uh, he kind of <laughs> redeemed himself there. <laughs> not the most confident shooting by G2, but they've got the job done in game one. Look, I'm convinced that, you know, as long as you get the follow-up afterwards, if you make up for your own <laughs> mistake, 
It doesn't matter. No one's ever going to remember that open net miss Chicago, except for me. I'm going to remember. Uh, but a <laughs> scary, a scary I mean, moment I, there for G2. All I'm saying yeah. is, I, I don't think he tried to double sap it off the near post there. I'm pretty sure right. he just tried to score. Um, but you know, that, that's a good thing about aiming near post, is if you do miss, then it's, it is possible to rebound or even land on the ball. His first miss, he hits it towards the far post bottom corner away from Space Station. So when he misses, the ball just clears itself. Here it is again. I mean, Chicago, wide open net there. He had boot. He had all the time in the world, and he just completely beamed it. Um, it gets the winning goal. He, that's going to sell any potential um, awkward nerves he might have been feeling there uh, before game two, which I think he might be playing it. I think Space Station probably picked twos here. Yeah, I don't see uh, any ones option for or any decent ones option against Atomic. Not uh, Arsenal? G2. No. You know, I mean, it, losing 11-3 to Toasty is not a, it's not something I, I want on I'm my I'm going to defend Arsenal for a minute here. Listen. Okay. He's, okay. Getting, he's getting destroyed by Colin Sumpy for losing 11-3 to Toasty. Those scorelines, they do happen sometimes in 1v1. Uh, they it, do? It, it's not... It's not completely out of uh, out of the world, out of this world, to lose by scorelines like that. So, I think you know, you can't judge a, a player like Arsenal off one game. And uh, you know, if he's been the player practicing one v ones for this tournament, and Hoxer and LJ have been practicing twos for this tournament, I don't think you change your your ones player just because of one game. Um, I hope that they they stick with it. If we make it to game four to see the one v one, right now we do have two v two on your screen. As we, were, as we were expecting, this is a more comfortable game mode for both of these teams. Will LJ, the world record holder for two's MMR, uh, team up with Hawks here to take down a proven duo of Chicago and Atomic. Well, Chicago going to start off here. And just trying to get some kind of rhythm set up. Atomic next up has to buy some time for Chicago. But plenty of space as Hawks are up for the challenge. Atomic underneath him, got the catch and turns away on the challenge, trying to keep possession. It does force, or LJ does force them back with good protection on the ball. You know, twos, you get punished a little more often than threes for letting go of a touch. You gotta be careful deciding when you decide to give another team possession and when decide to turn up the aggression. Can't all be one or the other. But for Hawkser and LJ, they're having some trouble getting set up as LJ gets another clear downfield. At G2, Playing a pretty safe style so far, both behind the ball, but Source Space Station Gaming. I've got a chance to cast LJ in uh, some high level twos lobbies recently, and he actually turned out to be one of the more aggressive players out of all the top players in NA. You know, when you look at Daniel in beast mode in twos, first killer, um, LJ, I think Chronic was also involved. LJ came out as one of the more aggressive out of that bunch um, who like to, you know, sit behind the ball and get 100 boosts in defense a lot. Not so much LJ, quite happy to play with low boost, just to make life easier for his teammates. So if, uh, if I was to guess, Hawkser's having a good time right now, playing with this guy. See, he was very easy to synergize with for everyone that I've seen him play with so far. Well, they're still sticking to that safe rotation, but they've been losing this battle in the corner for possession. Well, Hawkser does get the boost spawn and a great clear. Chicago is sitting on the far side. Has to rotate out, Hawkser. One v one chance against Chicago, but Atomic coming back in, helping him out in Chicago. Can't oh, wow. get LJ out of the way. LJ winning two, oh, but it gets wow. shipped, and that's enough. Oh. He misses the dish. A little bump killed his momentum, and he ran out of boost. He couldn't get it done. Yeah, he just used all of his boost to get off the wall, and he couldn't get back to the ball. He needed to save just a little bit to send himself back towards the ball there. Alternatively, you know, not jump off so far. Definitely a slight mechanical mistake there from LJ. I believe it was scorable. Awkward nonetheless, the very, very technical shot to get right. He just could not finish it off, and it's right back to G2. Chicago on the end of Atomic's pop, but shut down by Hoxer, who's recovered well in the ceiling there. Very cautious game by both teams. And I mean, it makes sense for Space Station. They really can't afford to lose this. Oh, Atomic going for the corner read. He gets a perfect bounce on the ramp for Chicago, but still it's a quick read for Hawkser to get. LJ, he just caught him out. Atomic couldn't get back in time. LJ sends one. Oh, LJ, the only player is really keeping an eye on where the ball's gonna bounce there. Atomic just took a bit too long to identify the danger. He was hanging about near the ball, just in case there was any kind of dribble he needed to shut down. Before he uh, had any chance to recover, the shot's on target from distance. So, you know, Atomic probably needed to back off a little bit more. They respect the clear. 
Shen, another chance for Space Station. LJ's up quick for it. This is why he is the number one 2v2 player in North America when it comes to ranked. I mean, Daniel and Beast Mode might be the top combination, but this guy is individually number one. Chicago kind of rotated back into net, having to defend the shot. He was already coming back, having to make up for the 50 that Atomic couldn't win. And at that point, it was just too much. Hawkser knew exactly where to put it, put it too high. Chicago couldn't respond. And this is where they may really start to figure it out because Space Station get back in the 3v3. And they were starting to figure things out against G2. I mean, G2 certainly helped them out a bit. But Space Station winning this one may get one more chance at the 3v3 to take, oh, wow. uh, take a lead. Look at LJ go. He's looked great so far in the 2v2. A very tricky play there from LJ, you know, kind of turtling into position, hoping the ball will bounce up on top of him so he can just flip his car back over and get a surprising pop forwards. Didn't pan out, but it still has G2 guessing. A minute to go, Atomic with a huge oh. shot to top corner. It's another crossbar, G2. Oh, their worst enemy. Their accuracy once again, one, two pass, fails to connect. G2 need to hit the target and they need to do it soon, but they're just oh, no. <laughs> on top of each other. It's a winter major from 2022 all over again. Oh, I don't put that evil on him. Atomic finds Chicago a little bit of time. Yeah, still some time left on the clock for Chicago. 49. Oh, well, that catch isn't going to get it done. Chicago wants the bump, giving Atomic a lane, and Atomic oh, denied by LJ. My. Chicago tried to turn it back, but Hawkster clears it, and maybe G2 oh, wow. get one more chance at the net here. Chicago, nope, cut off by Hawkster and LJ, and that likely cleans up game two. That it was a disgusting save from LJ. He had about 12 boost, maybe 20. He just darted into his net, in and out save, time to perfection to shut down the shot while being chased. I mean, he's done everything in this game. So impressed by Space Station Gaming's 2's team, um, but especially, you know, LJ getting just such effective touches every time he's on the ball and uh, just being such a difficult player to get past. Hawks are the perfect teammate for him. And the, these guys, they really look like they could be at that level um, of a Daniel Beast mode. Or they could be at that CRR Rays Bowl level as well. Bit of an unlucky uh, play there from LJ, nearly getting the opening goal, but it didn't take long for him to sink a long shot into the G2 net. And from then on, it was pretty comfortable. Space Station, a deserved uh, win, and now tying the series 1-1. And LJ, not just in that 2v2, but even in the 3v3 that they lost, he was commanding the uh, the offense for Space Station on a lot of those plays. He's really had a great match so far. Now we're back into the 3v3. Space Station were able to tie things up against G2. G2 helped them out a little bit. Can Space Station get it done without G2's help? I mean, we still don't know if G2 will be giving it. We'll find out right now. Space Station, they have a big chance to really make oh. G2 sweat. But that's a big demo from LJ preventing the shot on net. One comes anyway, turned away to the side by Arsenal. Yeah, a bit of physicality from both teams there. Bump landing from Space Station at the same time as the demo from G2, or I think vice versa. Um, that kind of ended up being a pretty even position. Yeah, G2, like Chicago said in the pre-match interview, have had a bit more time to figure out how to manage their temperament in these um, games, in this format. They've just got to get the complete mental reset. It's different from 3v3 where you're doing the same game mode time and time again. It's easier to get into a rhythm. Oh. Are they going to be improved from last year where they did look like they were struggling to perform to their usual 3v3 level after taking losses in other game modes? I definitely think having your full roster certainly helps with that this time around. Chicago even talking about not playing a lot of games with Mist last year definitely played into plays into that mental factor uh, a big time but when you have your team you have your coach Sathy with you you have more of a chance to recover in those tight moments where you could tilt out or things don't go your way in a certain mode and that rhythm is a little easier to find right now though space station playing a real physical game against g2 they prevented a couple of passes that would have been pretty dangerous from g2 here's one chicago trying to force space station to rush on defense threatening the bump and they finally break out again a dead even pass chicago just a little too tight space station get another breakout lj one-on-one -on -one. flick up pile oh. off the bar couldn't get the read oh that's so unlucky again for lj so close to making this shot work and it almost works as a pass but it bounces across the goal too quickly for arsenal to catch up to space station so far have looked pretty organized in defense in this game 
And that's very promising for them. Usually the part of a new team that's harder to get um, going. A big touch in the corner by Atomic. And I don't think anyone saw that one coming from Space Station. Lots of space for Atomic now to make a solo play work. But it looks like it's just gone a bit too far wide to really be a threat to Space Station. Or quite happy to leave in the corner. G2 again collide, but awkward as they trip over each other for the second game in a row. They always seem to have a, a tight rotation. Like, I feel like they, they bump into each other more than all other teams. It's not the... It's not even been a while since I've seen them do that, even outside of this tournament. But they still they still find a way to recover on most of those. I don't feel like they get punished nearly as much when those plays do happen. But I do think it's a product of how tightly they play together. You've seen second man especially really play tightly up close. Third man is playing wide and out to the side rather than back beyond midfield. And that, that can create some interesting rotations backwards. It can also put you in some trouble. I guess a team like Space Station, who have proven to be very physical, that G2 haven't been, but Atomic just lets that ball roll off his hood. And Space Station again, excellent job managing on defense, not allowing too much pressure, although they have to pull off quickly as Chicago's double taken away. A oh, really nice cut there in the midfield by Arsenal. Realized that the clear was going to be intercepted, so he made sure to get there first. Space Station survived yet another G2 offensive surge, but it's not done. Chicago fires down oh, a bump oh. on the goal line, sends the ball into the post. But once again, G2 just can't get the ball in between the sticks. It's been a problem for them all year, and it continues to plague them every now and then. Accuracy in the final third, not quite good enough for G2. Is it enough for Space Station to punish LJ? Quick on the ball in midfield. And Arsenal was planning for that ball to come back across. So Hoxer now has to buy time for Space Station to get back. And they do. Arsenal and LJ working to get the ball downfield. LJ a close touch, sizing up his opposition in midfield. But Atomic just got such a monster clear. Nobody from Space Station was ready for it. There's oh. another one, a little high off the bar. The ideas are there, the passing lanes are open, but the shots, they're oh, not sure. good enough. That one finally connects Chicago. First goal for G2. Yeah, they were just in a lot of trouble here, Space Station Gaming. Hawks are flying back to try and be the hero, but he missed his touch. He was the only player with any kind of boost of momentum in the play. Chicago played the ball correctly, and they will take a late lead for the second time in a row in 3v3. I really, I can't complain too much of what I've seen from Space Station Gaming. They look pretty good in threes, but G2 are one of the best threes teams in the planet. This is what they do. They're like the veteran team of Rocket League. It's just, every time you think that a team might finally be able to push it, push out against them, you know, the teams that aren't named Gen G, FaZe, or otherwise <laughs> teams in the world, like G2 are the gatekeepers. That veteran presence proves time and again to be too difficult. And now G2, as long as they can put this ball on the ground, be one away from qualifying for Gamers 8. Oh, hold on. For a second time, but wait, oh, Arsenal. Wait. Oh, poor oh, oh, still oh, on the God. ramp. No chance at it. G2 got one more to go. Oh, what a glorious opportunity for Arsenal, but he just beamed the flick at the worst possible moment straight into the ground. And they're going to need to win the 1v1 uh, while down two match points. I think G2 overall definitely deserved that 3v3 win, though. They were the team with the majority of the pressure, the majority of the chances. And uh, although Space Station's, you know, they had their looks here and there. And I've got to keep saying, I love this new look LJ. The LJ is kind of just the boss of the team now that Daniel's uh, vacated that spot. Um, I think he's, he's looking very dangerous and playing with authority on the ball. Uh, there was the crucial mistake there from Hawkser. Difficult ball to get to quickly. He didn't want to be too slow, knowing that Chicago would make a touch if he doesn't. Um, but yeah, just missed, missed the key touch. A very awkward defensive touch into the corner, uh, allowing G to the win. I think this is going to be a tough one coming up for Space Station. Uh, we watched Atomic earlier. Atomic played a really solid game, one one v one game against a against Cosmic, who has been really good in one v one lately. So him against whoever Space Station pick, if it is Arsenal again, let's find out. And it looks like LJ is going to be taking the pitch. So LJ versus Atomic. Okay. What's your what's your what's your take on this one, Johnny? Uh, I'm just disappointed we don't get the Arsenal redemption arc. I mean, I, I think Arsenal <laughs> he's, he's actually a very smart 1v1 player historically. You know, might not be as active as he once was, but there was certainly a time where Arsenal was a dangerous player to anyone in the NA1 scene. Um, 
Now, LJ going to give it a go against Atomic here. They, I would say nothing to lose because Atomic played quite well earlier, but they do in fact have this series to lose if they can't get the win here, so that wouldn't be true. LJ just doing a little bit of a parallel parking maneuver there before collecting the ball. Rarely seen in 3v3, but reversing bigger part of 1v1 than any other game mode in RL. Oh, that's a great chance for Atomic. LJ didn't have the boost to really throw himself at it, though. Atomic does. Here comes the counter. And one thing against Cosmic that pressed me with Atomic was I mean, he got Cosmic to bite on almost every single fake challenge. Now, this time, he does get the bump pretty big. He had no boost. Now, he's got midfield. Now, he's got a full tank in towards oh. the reset. The bar really is killing G2 in every game mode right now. There's another one. Forces LJ to bite. Atomic putting on some good pressure right now. LJ trying to manage, but he's having some difficulties. Yeah, if Atomic plays this sequence correctly, he does have LJ dead to rights here. The boost is about to spawn behind him. He reverses back into it. So LJ is just managing such little boost right now. Atomic does find a way through. I mean, LJ surviving for a while there, but the goal was on its way. As long as Atomic kept sealing the boost, kept on putting on pressure with little shots here and there, that's exactly what he did. Now LJ having to respond here off this kickoff. I think the and the big thing with Atomic is he's just he's it feels unfazed even when he does have a lot of pressure behind him. I know we probably over talk about G2 being such a, a veteran team, but Atomic he's the most mechanical player on G2. Yeah. And if he if he's beaten you and he's not even unlocked his mechanics, that's a scary place to be. Yeah, and it's Ooh. it's a lot of mechanical plays are just things like this, just being in the right place that you can make a quick reflex save you know it doesn't it looks like more of a positional thing but atomic just he knows his limits and he knows the limits of his opponent as well another save while shadowing atomic with some great reactive defense here now decides to throw himself forward to the play how's the recovery good enough atomic survives three consecutive shots with a, a little bit of reactive play a little bit of proactive play wow it's going to keep lj guessing really tight no one leaving the play early to go get a canister everyone relying on or both players relying on pads with the, how close it was playing atomic didn't take himself out of the rotation worked well to get out on defense now he's got to pop up here see where lj is going to go with it atomic forced him to the air again enough challenge from lj but he's out of boost he's got to manage the ball and he's got the boost and the ball now. Atomic, though, full tank to defend him. LJ on the reset. Atomic oh. gets the block. The man can't be beat on defense. Now he flips in front. Got the pad. The recovery. The oh, shot no. is too high. He cannot what? hit. He can't hit under the bar. He's conceding as well. He just took a second shot out of rage. Oh. And LJ walks it in. Oh, no. Atomic did so well. He had the defensive pre-jump, the counter-attack with a quarter flip to set himself up. But he hits the bar. And then instead of just playing the ball to a safe location, he overextends with a very ill-advised angle shot and has conceded. We've got another low scoring game here. <laughs> Space Station and G2 go to the break. Yeah, you'd think we were uh, we were in a 3v3 almost, but Daniel Ray's ball was also 2-1. That had me scratching my head. Here we go again. Atomic on the catch, wants his boost. He's over LJ. Oh. This one might be in. No, oh. LJ follows through him. He wasn't over him at all. LJ was sailing right underneath him. And LJ now Ooh. trying to move. Almost got that recovery in time, but he still forces it through Atomic. Can he get around the ball in time? A little oh. tight. Oh, he tried to squeeze it. Too risky, but is it risky? Atomic had no boost. He had to go back. LJ can recover. Wait, one more, Johnny. Here comes Atomic. Resets there. Tried it on the 50. Save. Now LJ gets the break. That should be it right there. Goal for LJ. Uh, you know, this is where it's starting to fall apart for Atomic. You know, I think he, pro he played a great counter-attacking style against Cosmic earlier on today. He punished Cosmic for overextending. But now that he's the one who has to go forward, you can just see that he's not quite as familiar with these positions. He doesn't know if he should be going all in, if he should be shooting, or if he should just be playing for a long-term advantage. And those, you know, kind of weaknesses are starting to show. He might have the kickoff goal, though. He does. We've got another tight game. Atomic pushes the ball around the inside of LJ's shoulder. It's a great strength there with the 50-50. We are even again. Well, just when you thought LJ finally built up a little bit, that's the fun of 1v1. Even if he goes up another on that kickoff, still a minute 15 and plenty of time. This time the kickoff straight neutral. Oh, look at LJ this. just made it all his. Ends it full and there we go for LJ. That is a fantastic shot from LJ. He had to beat Atomic to this. Atomic was just a split second later to the ball, LJ sinks it just underneath the crossbar. 
He needed to be so quick with that one. It's a counter kickoff goal from LJ. They both had one on each other back to back. Now LJ's going to wave dash off the uh, landing to take control in the back corner. Lovely adaptation there from LJ. Just controlling the play beautifully. And he has sunk the open net. Atomic again, overextending an attack. LJ just a bit too consistent. Now it's just about managing this next kickoff and beyond for LJ. Hey, we've been talking, you talked, Johnny, about how you've been impressed with him in this series so far. And he comes in on the 1v1 against Atomic, who looked solid earlier. Built up this two goal lead. Love that. Atomic on the kickoff, can't take it away. It's a big time for LJ to give his team one last chance for qualification and uppers, and he can't make oh. the grab. Atomic, one left to go. Yeah, LJ got just a bit lost there. You can see that he wanted to pressure the ball. He did not want to give Atomic space to turn and shoot, but he didn't pick up any more than I think we had one small boost pad on his way. He needed just a, maybe one or two more to stabilize that position. Atomic did so well, though, to set up a shot from an awkward angle. He's got to find another one, though. 45 seconds to do it, and LJ's stolen his boost away. Really nice fake challenge there from LJ as well. He's got Atomic jumping at nothing. The demo connects. LJ is going to score a fifth. Atomic, a bit of a sitting duck at the edge of the box. He did not see it coming. That's just a classic play from LJ there. You see, Atomic did actually jump, but not fast enough. LJ up by two. No water left in the pond for Atomic. A drought in game four. In the end, can LJ really stick it to him here? He wins the kickoff. Atomic flipping back. I don't think he's going to. Oh, he got there. LJ, though, sends it back. And I, I tell you what, Johnny, I know like the full flying, uh, you know, double reset, musty attempts and everything like maybe that's about to happen right here. Like this? Wait, he's just going to drop it. Oh, oh, smart to go for the low 50. LJ's coming down. You have advantage as the attacker in that oh, situation. Just... Now he gets LJ to play the game. <laughs> LJ's just his puppet, and he's dangling on the strings. Oh, he's just like, I'm, I'm just screaming here. Just shoot. Just for goodness sake, shoot the ball. LJ's he's jumping at nothing here. But Sonic does find the angle. It is a brilliant shot from just outside of the goal. 13 seconds to go. Atomic has been losing the majority of kickoff possessions, but he might be able to half flip into one here. Yes, he does. He grabs the uh -oh. mid boost. Now he's going to have the flip reset. Uh -oh. As he gets the ceiling bounce, tries to get the 50 50 oh, win. Wave dash recovery, mind game, but LJ plays the ball and wins it for SSG. We are going to start this one out in game five. Oh, man. I got so excited there. Use the wave dash to recover to get back around the ball. And I'm like, oh, if he gets that on his hood, he can get the flick. He can send it, but LJ kept it down. Oh man, that got so close. That was so close. This one is turning out real fun. And now we end things on the 3v3 for qualification into Gamers 8 and more money for charity. But Atomic, he couldn't get it done. And LJ continues to be the center for Space Station Gaming. Yeah, LJ played such a good game there. I mean, that some of these saves were incredible by uh, LJ to you know, really show us something that we're not familiar with about his game. I mean, he's not known for his 1v1 gameplay, but defensively, he really made this difficult for Atomic, and he took his chances right at the end of the game. Atomic pulls it back to a one-goal difference with a beautiful mind game and a slow play, but it was that last chance. He, he won the kickoff uh, possession with a half flip and then another flip into the boost, but over hit the first touch. He really wanted a nice, slow air dribble there, but he accidentally hit it into the ceiling. So I think he got the flip reset right about the same time the ball was hitting the ceiling. Very difficult to control that. I can't really, you know, can't really blame him for uh, for losing that one at the last second. But we are going to end this one in 3v3. G2 have won both of the 3v3 so far. This is, you know, kind of the story of the match. You know, G2 are just this good in 3v3 that you expect them to come out on top. Uh, you know, Space Station have made it as difficult as they can for them. <laughs> they beat them in two side ones. LJ carrying them into game five. Yeah, I, th I think the big question for Space Station is uh, how do you handle this G2 pressure for the two straight 3v3 games that you've had? You've been out pressured, you've been out shot. You haven't been able to really get much done in the blue half. When you are playing defense, for the most part, it looks great. But if you're playing four minutes of defense, you're typically going to lose the game. Hoxer and Arsenal going to push forward. The physical game seemed to work for them early, but what's what's your make on the last 3v3 chance for Space Station, Johnny? It's, it's really difficult because G2 have been a bit inaccurate. They've given Space Station some looks at the goal, but overall it has looked G2 favored. So, you know, Space Station have just got to decide whether or not they want to just go full send here 
um, and just start taking some more risks? Or do they try to catch G2 um, on a downward uh, game after another loss? I, I don't think G2 are going to tilt here. You know, Chicago said that's their big thing about this format is just getting the reset after losing another game mode. So this is the big test. Can they do it again? They did it in game three. Space Station are definitely a good match for them. G2 have been better. Next up, JNAPS gets that boost deal, but that's a massive clear for Space Station. Atomic had come back quickly. And that just broke the rhythm that G2 were setting. Arsenal, nothing for him. G2 just throw it right back to the orange half. Oh, and oh. an ill-advised touch. Not one you want if you're Space Station. Oh, that is so unfortunate. It's Hawkser, the new signing. He's trying to knock the ball into the back corner right next to the wall. He does not want that to bounce off the crossbar and in front of the goal, but he's actually hit an impossible angle redirect into his own net while doing so. So a, a, a good idea there from Hawkser, but just gets the, the touch a bit wrong. Didn't get enough on it. Now here comes G2 again. j with a monstrous double tap from near post at break speed. Oh, that is a fast one. 139 kilometers of pain from JNAPS. LJ, I mean, even he, that shot was between blinks. There was no way he was getting to that ball. Yeah, and you know, it, it looks at this point really tough for SSG. You look at the road ahead of them and you think, oh man, is, how are they supposed to make it through G2? Half the game gone and G2 are just in the full swing of things now. And lower bracket, they've got Optic waiting for them. I mean, it doesn't get any easier, but this is the ideal match for them. I think this is your fourth and fifth best team in this tournament right here. Mm. So you can't really ask for anything different. Complexity, V1, Optic, all terrifying teams in this format. So this was the one for SSG based on their other game mode wins. They needed just one game in 3v3. Uh, right now, it looks like they're going to lose all three. So it's, it's their own fault, really. Um, but G2 have played so well, I, you know, you can't really blame them too much. Ooh, Arsenal tried to stretch with that reset. LJ pulling Atomic out. This is working for Space Station. Arsenal gets the catch. Oh, no. Can't wrap around it. The input's going wrong for Space Station at the wrong time. Now to commit, LJ useless in the air behind his teammate. Arsenal all by himself, and he barely gets the grab. Yeah, Space Station is really stretching here, trying to get shots from difficult angles. They're, you know, they've been so starved of opportunities that they just have to, they feel like they have to go for everything. And they do still have 90 seconds to go. Do they have any firepower left? Chicago going to try and put this one beyond all doubt here. He's got a double commit in defense from SSG, but LJ is still on the plate. It's hard clear, more of a pass to G2's defense. They're waiting patiently for the ball. Yeah, Arsenal kind of dove at that one, didn't he? Atomic just let him. Easy full field clear for Atomic. Oh, Hoxer lets it drop. The ideas are there. But then that final execution, either the shot's weak or they can't actually get it on target. And G2 have been double committing in front of the net. But Space Station, their rotation has not allowed them to punish those, those mistakes, even if a double didn't really lead to an opening. Oh, oh that's a pass. great pass. But they save it anyway. Here comes another one. Maybe they get this across. It's a bit awkward for Jane. Now, pre-flip to get the block. He does push LJ off the ball. But everyone from Space Station was beyond the midfield line. That's not going to get it done. Chicago drops it straight down. And G2 clean up game five. SSG, they had pressure, but they backed off. The synergy a bit lacking in offense there. Chicago makes the air dribble bump work. He had a bit of a reset off that as well. Brilliant mechanics by Chicago to put G2 three goals ahead. They're on the fast track to the upper final. Oh. Be taking place tomorrow unless can SSG do something so far. They've been pretty lacking of chances, but there's one. 34 seconds to go. Good catch and then delayed flick from Arsenal. Not even a bad recovery there from Atomic. But let's see what happens here on the kickoff. Is this is crunch time? You want it goal, you know, with at least 15 seconds left that gives you a chance for one, maybe two tries with time, or really just one solid try with time on the clock. <gasps> Wait, it's, hap it's happening, bro. Wait, actually, what? actually, a six <laughs> second goal off the kickoff. What a bounce! Oh, what yeah, speed by Hawkser was just too fast. JNAPS was not up in the air slowly for that one, but he misread it. And Hawkser snipes LJ, who's there to make the goal a bit bigger. 28 seconds is a long time. Now they're just one goal back. <laughs> this is like four chances, maybe, if they can get the ball. Oh, Atomic. Not a lot of boost here, but he's actually over one. And Hawkser, last man back for Space Station. LJ coming in the rear. 
Do they have it here? LJ going close against the corner. Oh, that was a nasty double attempt, but he couldn't get power. He really didn't really make contact at all. Now one more chance for Space Station. Arsenal back in front of the ball. Got the 50. LJ sizing it up. No time left. LJ on another 50. Up high for Hawkser. It's got to be Arsenal. He's got to buy time. LJ on the far side. Hawks are getting underneath. Reset. LJ Whoa. barely gets there. They're racing back. This is looking more hard, or this is looking harder, rather, off the ceiling. LJ, that one looks like it's on the ground. G2 qualify for Gamers 8 moving on, and Space Station fall to the lower bracket. Oh, valiant effort from SSG. They had the 2v2 win. They had the 1v1 win, but unfortunately for them, despite three tries, they just cannot beat G2 in 3v3. I mean, this is just a very G2 series, isn't it, in this format? They're a 3v3 team through and through. But, you know, when you when you got three teams that this format's made for, and then a team like G2, yeah, they're just likely to make it through, aren't they? Definitely, I think, the easier side of the bracket based on what we've seen so far today. Um, but they've definitely deserved top four. G2, they've beaten their main competition on this side of the bracket, SSG. They beat Koi earlier on as well, um, who I believe have advanced to the lower bracket quarterfinals. So both of the teams from this side of, the, of G2's bracket that have made lower bracket round two, G2 sent them there. So uh, they, they've deserved top four. How far can they go? We'll find out tomorrow. Um, but they have qualified for Gamers Day. Awesome uh, job by G2 Esports. Absolutely. Space Station, uh, they still have a chance in the lower bracket, but I am curious what the, uh, what the desk thinks, what Banks thinks. Let's head back to them and talk to our analysts. Curious what I think? I'll tell you what I think. I think that sometimes accents just have this way about like the way that they hit your ears, your sense of sound. And I think that if I could permanently change my accent, I would change it to a Scottish accent. Cole, what would you change it to? I love it when he's muted, Stumpy. It's just oh, that's my favorite so accent the Cole's pleasure. ever done. Just complete yeah, silence. I agree. <laughs> I agree. That was lovely. I I changed it um, to probably uh, Cole's accent just then. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> oh, can you hear me now? I can. There you go. Yeah, I yeah. didn't change anything. I'm, 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 I'm whatever. Oh, was... What was your witty answer to Banks' great yeah, question? I was sticking up for Jorby because you were going like, oh, if I could change my accent, there's a beautiful, softly spoken American voice in there as well. And then, oh, hey, oh, come, Jorby boy. <laughs> I, I would have, no, but Jorby's American. It's a very specific American. You'd pick American I'd over pick... Johnny Boy's dulcet Scottish tones. I'd pick Johnny Boy over, no, Jorby over Johnny Boy. Jor Jorby boy over Johnny. Jorby Banks, this isn't going to win. Right? We, need, we need to move on. We, we're going to keep going with this abort, into the night, mate. Abort. <laughs> Stumpy, uh, did that series meet your expectations? We've said that G2 have the ability to beat anyone on any given day if they're mm -hmm. in good form. Seemed like they were just then. And just. if they get to play 3v3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that they lost the 1v1 and they lost the 2v2. But my God, a G2, a 3v3 team. Johnny Boy said it. It's the most G2 win they could have probably had. They made sure that, you know, although that they um, they they ended up losing the 2v2 uh, versus LJ and Hoxha, and then LJ hopped in for that 1v1, and Johnny Boy is, an, is a, a fervent uh, Arsenal apologist in 1v1, he I heard as well. Yeah. And he made sure to... Basically, tell me, Stumpy, you're an idiot. He is pretty good, you know. Um, it was just a G2 win. Um, and ultimately, you need to win in either best of fives or best of sevens. If you take all of the 3v3s, then you win this series. So if you can focus on them, then happy days. But you're not going to go far in Gamers 8. Now G2 are there, only winning the 3v3s, especially in the best of seven. They have to find a way to find victory in the 2v2, to find victory in the 1v1s, or else eventually their 3v3 win streak is going to run out and they're going to lose that one as well. Well, but I mean, like, credit to SSG because they are a brand new team and this is the hardest challenge this version of Space Station Gaming have faced. And they lost each game against G2, each 3v3 against G2, by just one goal. It was overtime in mm -hmm. game one, it was 1-0 in game three, and then so close, Banks, my oh, head was so in my hands. It. I was praying oh. for the three-goal comeback and it just wasn't to be, but at the end, Space Station Gaming to G2 all the way in those threes.
Yeah, they really did. We even saw that Chicago said in that VT that we saw before the match even started that they've been practicing their ones. They've been practicing their twos. They've been trying to get up to scratch because they know if they go back to Gamers 8 this year, that's the thing that they're going to be missing out on and ultimately possibly, you know, reaching a, a top eight or like mm. you said, Cole, a top mm. 13 to 56, whatever it was. Can't now, wait uh, for a documentary <laughs> about that. Wow. Stuff. <laughs> and we didn't get to see the Arsenal redemption, Stumpy. Uh, Everyone was expecting it. Okay. John Eva mentioned it the stream, I couldn't believe it. I oh, know, but right, they're still playing in the lower bracket quarters, all right? They're playing later today oh. versus Optic. I want to see AJ Arsenal. Arsenal versus <laughs> AJ, all right? That, that, that's, that's all. Or Optic or Arsenal versus Rettles. Some kind of grudge match needs to happen, but whatever it is, <laughs> Arsenal, I'm sorry I had a go at you. Please get back on the pitch. I need to I need to see what you're capable of. And how also we're assuming that AJ will step aside for Rettles for the storyline. You know, sure this. Oh, well, well, <laughs> if he doesn't, he's boring. Sure, we can all become millionaires of this tournament, but come on, it's a story, isn't it? Do oh, it it's a for funny the story. Do it for, for the, the virtual studio. Come on, just the do lols. it for us. Why exactly. not? We've got yeah. an updated bracket for you that we're going to bring up on your screens very, very shortly. And that updated bracket looks like this. Ooh. G2 taking out Space Station Gaming. Holding G2 bracket. and version 1 are both now guaranteed spots at Gamers 8. Reaching that upper bracket final means that they have guaranteed their spot. They are two out of the four teams, so now it's down to the lower bracket to decide who are going to be your two remaining teams that are going to make it all the way through to Gamers 8. And on your screens right now, this is what we're going to have today. Two remaining matches today. Complexity Gaming versus Koi and Space Station Gaming versus Optic to round out the evening. Complexity versus Koi, that's what's coming up next. Stumpy, I'm going to come to you first. Mm. Koi have obviously showed up. They three Reload Accelerate earlier on. Maybe mm. the lower bracket is where they feel most at home, but it's complexity. Um, mm -hmm. I can kind of guess what you're going to say. Complexity are just sort of literally better at Rocket League, unfortunately, <laughs> for Koi. Um, sort of literally. Sometimes it just comes down to that. Uh, Koi, uh, Koi have put forward a brilliant performance so far. I saw Sosa tweet earlier saying, one more win. You know, we, we, we get this one, then we're one step closer to getting through to that lower bracket final, then, we, then we'll be able to go to Gamers 8 and represent. They have got a really hard journey there. Every team does here, and I think Complexity, out of the four that are remaining between between Complexity, Koi, Space Station, and Optic, they're unfortunately against the hardest team in Complexity. Yeah, they're also against the player who made the grand finals of Gamers 8 last time around. CRR, he dragged... And he's better now. ...esports to that finals. He's improved since then. Even more muscular than you, Banks, <laughs> was, was the power oh, of hey, CRR. Whoa, whoa. I, I, I know, Mom. I know. Would you believe, would you believe it was possible? CRR <laughs> showed it. Um, and, yeah, he will refuse for complexity to fall down against... Imagine, you know, you come in here, you made the grand finals last time. You're not going out to Koi. It shan't happen. And complexity, 100%. percent going to take that on. Although, Koi did bring in their number one rated 1v1 player who was, uh, let's say, nervous was S5 Cosmic against Atomic against G2 earlier on. So I do want to see the real S5 Cosmic as their mm. um, trump card up their sleeve. You two really don't hold back, and I absolutely love it. With that being said, it's it even time... stronger. Well, it's time, it's, stronger than you. it's time to say goodbye to you two. I'm really sorry, oh. but get out of my virtual studio. You're get out of my spaceship. Small. That's what's happening. I'm very sorry to see you guys both <laughs> leave, but we will oh. have more Cole and Stumpy tomorrow. Very, very excited hey. for that. But we've got two more matches to come in today's rounds of Gamers Without Borders, and I'm really excited to show them to you. But first off, we've got to take a very quick break before we dive into complexity versus Koi right after the break.